Hello and welcome to this video. In this video I want to discuss a warning message that uh, often occurs when people run latent class analysis in the M plus software and since many people are confused about what to do about this message I want to uh, discuss this here and explain what it means and what one should do about it. My name is Christian Geiser. On this channel, I present weekly statistics tutorials, usually related to structural equation modeling, latent class analysis, or other multivariate statistical um, methods, often related to the M plus software. If this is something that interests you, then please consider subscribing to this channel. Also, don't forget to hit the like button and check out the description for additional resources, including workshops and um, other resources. So in this video I want to talk about the warning message that you can see here in an output for a classical latent class analysis with dichotomous items that I ran and so you can see that here this error message says in the optimization one or more logit thresholds approached extreme values of negative 15 and 15 and were fixed to stabilize model estimation. These values imply probabilities of 0 and 1. In the model results section, these parameters have 0 standard errors and 999 in the z-score and p-value columns. And so what does this mean and how does this happen? So first of all, in order to understand what's going on, you have to know that M plus uses a logit parametrization of latent class models, which means that the parameters are estimated in terms of logistic regression coefficients, for example, logistic regression intercepts, and so on. And these can then be translated into the probabilities that we are more used to working with, that are more convenient when we interpret the results of a latent class analysis, where we're not uh, talking typically about logit uh, or logistic regression coefficients, but we're talking about probabilities, for example, of um, conditional response probabilities for items in a given class or class probabilities that reflect the class sizes. But behind the scenes and also in the output, M plus uses this logit parametrization. And in the logit parametrization of latent class analysis, M plus uses values of negative 15 and 15 to indicate extreme probabilities, so extremely high probabilities um, of 0 and 1. And so when these are encountered, these values of negative 15 and 15 in the estimation of the model parameters of a latent class model, for example, in the estimation of the conditional response probabilities for uh, one or more items, then M plus will issue this message. So when these uh, values become extreme, when, so say, the um, probabilities of endorsing an item or solving an item are very close to zero or very close to one, then that means that they are estimated to these boundary values or extreme values. We call these boundary values because a probability cannot be smaller than zero or larger than one by definition. And so therefore, when a probability gets estimated to be at the boundary of zero or the boundary of one, then, then that is, so say, an extreme value. And so these boundary values are a little bit tricky in latent class analysis because when a boundary value is estimated, then this parameter cannot get a standard error. And some people say, well, this is maybe a sign of a borderline improper solution. It could indicate that there's something wrong with your model. Maybe your sample size is too small for estimating the parameters of a latent class model, or you may be extracting too many classes, and so then some of these classes um, result in invalid parameter estimates because really it's it's really so to say extreme to have a probability of endorsement of an item that's exactly zero or exactly one that would imply that this item so say is perfectly reliable in terms of the measuring the latent class in question when there's no uh, when there's so say all all people responded zero or one. And so that's kind of seems like a little bit unrealistic. And so therefore, some people say, well, these boundary values you have to be careful with if you encounter them, 
because they might signal that there's an improper solution or an invalid solution or a borderline invalid solution. And that's the reason why M plus gives you this message here to warn you and say, hey, in your output, you should look closely at your conditional response probabilities and other parameters because some of these probabilities are exactly zero or one and maybe there's something wrong with your model. So let's take a look at where we actually find these boundary values when we scroll down in the M plus output. You can see here we have five latent classes and we have the uh, class proportions, class probabilities, and you can see there's nothing wrong here. So these class probabilities, there's nothing there, there that is problematic, but this has to do with the other type of parameter in classical latent class analysis, and that, those are the conditional response probabilities. Now in M+, we first of all get the model results, the parameter estimates for the items in terms of low logistic regression parameters, so logit parameters, and so you can see that here. Here you can find in latent class 1 already these extreme values of negative 15 here for the item number 4 and for item number 7. These both resulted in extreme values and those are not the only ones. Also in latent class 2 you can see there are some negative 15s here and in latent class 3 there are some positive 15s here. And then also we have, no, that was it. So those are the classes that are affected here. Class 1, class 2, and class 3 have some of these extreme values. So now we should check out whether that makes sense. And so what makes it a lot easier to see that is by looking at the results in probability scale. So those are, so say, the logit parameters translated into equivalent probability parameters, which we find a lot more easy to interpret because they directly tell us so say, what the probability is that a person in a given class responded in a certain category for a certain item. That's way easier to interpret than these logit parameters. So here you can see that item number four was one that had a negative 15. And so that means that here we have... Um, a probability of 0 for category 1, and then accordingly a probability of 1.0 for category 2. So endorsing this item or solving this item here um, happened with 100% certainty in this class. And so then that is questionable whether that makes sense or not. And then likewise, the same thing for item number 7 here also. In the second class, we have these boundary values for item number 4, as well, and then for item number seven and item number eight. And again, in class number three, we also had some extreme values, and those were for item nine, 10, and 11, where category one had a probability of 1.0. Now, I don't want to go into the details here of why this happened in this particular application. However, what you need to figure out now in the next step is does this make sense? Do these parameter estimates make any sense? And it can be the case. So for example, in, a, in an achievement test that is speeded, where there's a time limit, it could be that certain items were just simply not reached. Maybe the last few items on the test sheet, the people ran out of time, or the people in this class, the participants, they didn't make it to the last few items. And then it would make sense that none of the people in this class solved any of these last items. And that's in fact an explanation for some of the results that you can see here in this example. So that would make sense. And you could say, well, this is a class of people who were maybe slow in solving the task in question. And so therefore, they got these um, exact zeros for the last few items. And that is um, a meaningful class. That makes sense. I don't really, um, I'm not really worried about these boundary estimates. So that could definitely be the case, in which case you could justify why these boundary values um, occurred and you may not be concerned about it. You may not reject your model because of them. In other cases where it's a random item and you don't really know why this item should have 100% endorsement or 100% solution probability in a given class, you may be more skeptical and you may say, well, well, that maybe speaks against the validity of this particular class solution or maybe it speaks against the validity of doing an LCA at all with a given data set, maybe because of the small sample size, or maybe you have too many items. And so 
or too many classes, and so therefore that could happen. So in other words, or in summary, we could say that whenever you run into this message with these boundary values, then you should be very careful in interpreting your results. You should carefully look at those item response probabilities and check out uh, to make sure that th that makes sense. Or if it doesn't make sense, then you should reconsider your analysis. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, then please subscribe to this channel. Also, please hit the like button and don't forget to check out the description for additional workshops and other videos. And I'll see you next week.